Stop whatever it is you're doing, pause this video, and go out and find a child. If you don't have one of your own, borrow one from somewhere, but ask permission. Once he or she is in your shop, lock the door, slap the iPhone out of his hands, and ask him if he's ready to work. Chances are he won't be. But if you place a few tools in his chubby little hands, give him a few scraps of wood and some glue, and his eyes don't light up, then you've got yourself a dud. Cut your losses and make a new one. I kid, because not every child has been ruined by TikTok and endless Marvel movies. There are still a few young skulls full of mush that can be molded into the next generation of woodworkers. That's a serious responsibility. It's your job to not only practice your craft, but to preserve it so the next generation has something to offer other than coding and professional gaming. Seven years ago, I grabbed the nearest kid and I ran an experiment. This is Aiden. When he was 11, I invited him to build a box with me. He'd never worked with wood before. I'm not sure he'd ever used any tools of any kind, but he did a good job and he got to keep the box he made. Frankly, I was pretty sure he'd break it within a year, but here he is seven years later as an 18 year old and his first woodworking project still has meaning to him today. He went on to take woodworking in high school and who knows what the future holds for him in this craft. I got those pictures yesterday and it warmed my heart. I know his parents are responsible for raising the polite, conscientious young man he is today, but I can't help but feel happy that I was able to at least spark his creativity and play some small role in reclaiming another child from a world that's trying its hardest to make them all dumb. Now it's your turn to mold a young mind in your workshop. How do you go about it? Well, I'll walk you through it as we revisit that original project, which I think is an ideal one because it's quick and simple enough to hold a young boy or young girl's attention, and it can be done with tools that are safe enough for a new woodworker, as long as you supervise. Because the number one rule is do not kill the child. And by kill, I also mean maim, delim, or otherwise scar them physically or emotionally. For that reason, you might want to avoid the jointer, planer, even the table saw, at least for now. A hand-powered miter saw, like an old Stanley, or one of the newer versions out there will be ideal. Here, Aiden is cross-cutting pieces to length. He's not wearing safety glasses, and that was an oversight on my part because I'd hate for a tiny sliver of something to shoot in his eye and have him walking around with a marble in his socket the rest of his life. You don't want that on your conscience, so get some safety glasses on the kid. Sawing is easy enough, but you may have to help hold the piece as he cuts it. I even started the curve for him. The point is, get the tools in his hands so he knows what it feels like to create something. Rabbit joints are a good option because they're more satisfying to make than butt joints, even if they aren't as satisfying to say. Here I'm laying out the shoulders for him. This old saw has a depth stop, so he was able to cross cut the shoulders on his own. If yours doesn't have a stop, let him cut most of the way and then just finish it up for him so they aren't cut too deeply. The cheeks are cut with a chisel. Now this is the most dangerous tool we used, and I made sure I explained that you never put your hand in front of a chisel while you're using it. This is a great opportunity to get the child thinking about the seriousness of good safety practices. But keep a close eye on him in case he doesn't get the point just yet. You don't want him to learn this lesson the hard way. We're using a thin strip of wood to raise the chisel off the bench top to the position of the rabbit's cheek. As long as your chisel is sharp and the back stays flat on that strip, he can pare away the waste with little trouble and the result will be consistent rabbits. If this is the kid's first time swinging a hammer, he may be a little apprehensive. I compensated for his weak swing by giving him a bigger hammer, which also seemed to add to the excitement. With that added mass, he got the job done. Kids are also likely to need some assistance holding the chisel flat to pare away the last little bit of waste. Help the best you can, praise their effort, and make them feel like they've almost got it and you're just gonna fine tune the work. You want the project to be successful, but there's a fine line between helping them and doing too much. The goal is to make them feel that they built the project, not you. One thing kids need little help with is applying glue. Let them make a mess. You can always clean it up later. This box has four rabbits to glue up, then it's time to apply clamps. But before it dries, you need to slip in a bottom panel. That'll keep the sides nice and square. In this case, the bottom is made from a piece of plywood, so it can be glued in place without worrying about wood movement. I wouldn't glue a solid panel like this. 
While everything is drying, get your top panel ready. This one was made by cutting an angle near the end of a piece of walnut, making a two-piece top. The small piece gets glued to the rim, but don't glue on the large piece. Instead, bore a hole through it and into the rim of the box at the other end. Make the hole in the lid larger than the threads of the screw that you'll use to attach it so it will pivot easily at that point. This swing type lid will be easier to install for a beginner than a hinged lid will be. I did worry that it was a weak point, but it's lasted seven years so far. I hate sanding, but some kids seem to love it. Maybe it's because it's a safe power tool to use. Unless you think the dust will choke off their little lungs, in which case you might want to have them wear a dust mask. Remember, his mother will likely be angry if you return him to her broken. Boiled linseed oil is a perfect kid-safe finish. It won't hurt their skin, they can't get high off the fumes, and the box can be handled even before it's completely dry. One or two coats will bring out the color in the wood, and that's always a nice reward for the hard work that went into the project. Most schools these days have eliminated creative classes like Woodshop. It's up to us to help the next generation discover the value of being creative and making something with their hands so their lives will be richer and the craft we love will be passed on. Besides, you'll have as much fun as they will. And afterwards, you can reward yourself with this. The Empower SBS Sharpening Station is an idea that was four years in the making, designed to provide everything you need right in one place so you can sharpen and strop your tools quickly and get right back to work. It begins with three diamond plates. There's 300, 600, and 1200 grit. After sharpening, you pop back on the magnetic stropping plates, which are color-coded to accept three levels of honing compound, including 1800, 2500, and 5000. When your tool's razor sharp, everything, including the compound sticks, the lapping fluid, it all goes back in the case. I like the simplicity of it. No more hunting around the shop for what you need. It is all in one place. In fact, I think it'll be just the thing to take with me when I travel. I like to carve when I'm on the road. If you're looking for a new system or a second one for working outside the shop, the Empower SBS system is something you should at least take a look at.